In the 1950s, as Japan National Railways JNR, was progressing with the elimination of steam locomotives on non-electrified lines, the insufficient output at wheel rim of the DF-50 gradually became a problem. Consequently, the 2000-horsepower Class DD-51, equipped with two medium-sized engines, was developed and mass-produced. On the other hand, there was a strong demand for diesel locomotives with a single high-output engine, which would be more advantageous in terms of maintenance effort and cost. However, at that time, there were no domestically produced engines or transmissions that could meet these requirements, and there was no prospect of realizing such a locomotive. Amidst this situation, Mitsubishi prototyped the 1800-horsepower class locomotive, DD91, equipped with a German-made Maybach MD870 engine and a Mikhydro hydraulic transmission. During this period, there was a growing demand for locomotives of this class from Southeast Asia and South America, and Mitsubishi was aiming to proceed with the development of mass production models with an eye on export. With a single-stage hydraulic transmission, it is not possible to handle locomotives that operate at high output for long periods from low speed to high speed due to the relationship between speed and efficiency. As a countermeasure, three hydraulic transmissions with different reduction ratios were prepared, and a method was adopted to switch power by controlling the flow of oil in and out of each transmission. However, while this method did not require advanced control technology, it was heavy and bulky, and had limitations on operating temperature to prevent oil foaming and oxidation. On the other hand, the Mikhydro system combined a single hydraulic transmission with a gear-shifting transmission. This method did not involve the operation of oil flow in and out within the transmission, and since the oil was contained in a sealed container, it was isolated from air, reducing oxidation and foaming deterioration, and allowing use in higher temperature environments. The locomotive performance was determined with the assumption of use on secondary lines where the D-51 was widely used. To achieve an output at wheel rim approximately 10% higher than the D-51, the engine output, rated at 2000 horsepower, was reduced to 1820 horsepower. Unlike the medium-speed engine mounted on the DF-50, the high-speed diesel MD870 was significantly lighter, and combined with the lightweight nature of the hydraulic system, the locomotive weight was reduced by 15.4 tons despite having 1.5 times the output at wheel rim, making it a groundbreaking high-performance locomotive at the time. At that time, domestic technology could only produce a supercharged engine for the DD-51 with a displacement of 61 liters and a weight of 5.6 tons, capable of just 1,000 horsepower. The engine adopted this time already featured an intercooler, which Japan National Railways JNR, had been hesitant to adopt. There was no way to achieve the same performance domestically as this 86-liter, 2,000-horsepower engine, so lightweight, high-output internal combustion locomotives had to rely on overseas technology. Due to the weight reduction, it was possible to meet the requirement of a 14-ton axle load with five axles, resulting in a locomotive with a rare B1B axle arrangement, featuring a middle bogey with single axle. Perhaps due to its export purpose, it had an unusual color scheme for a JNR locomotive at the time, with a body reminiscent of the Shonan EMUs, painted in the colors of expressed EMUs, giving it a unique appearance. In 1962, JNR introduced this locomotive on a lease basis, hauling commercial trains on the Fukuchiyama line and the Sanan main line for about three years. Whether due to the power of the genuine parts or the short trial period, there were no troubles during the test operation, unlike the later mass-produced DD-54, which frequently experienced issues with licensed parts. Expectations for this locomotive as a secondary-line locomotive grew, 